My name is Emily Johnson, and I'm the Curator of Arts and History at Monticello. Today, I want to talk through a new installation in Monticello's entrance hall that focuses on memories of and nostalgia about the Declaration of Independence. Let's start with Jefferson. In 1825, he wrote, the Declaration was the genuine effusion of the soul of our country at that time. And that really encapsulates what Jefferson thought about the Declaration, that it really was the statement of America's creation. And this installation positions us in the late 18-teens. It was a period of intense nationalism after the War of 1812, and a recognition that the revolutionary generation was passing. The Declaration of Independence during this time kind of recaptured American imaginations. Printers competed to produce copies of the Declaration, engraved in script as it had appeared in the original, and with actual facsimiles of the signatures. So let's talk about the various pieces. In Philadelphia in 1816, printer John Binns began advertising a large ceremonial print of the Declaration of Independence, but it was the combined work of seven individual artists, and it took three years to produce. It included portraits of Jefferson, Washington, and John Hancock, but note, he didn't include Adams. And it also featured the seals of the 13 original colonies and facsimiles of the signatures. Jefferson received this version in early 1820. Let's look a little bit more at the Benjamin Owen Tyler. In this installation, it's shown on a roller because that's how Tyler sent it to Jefferson. Binns took too long and Tyler took advantage. He made a simpler print that was cheaper too, and it became the first one to feature the signatures in facsimile. Jefferson received this one in early summer of 1818. Benjamin Owen Tyler actually came to Monticello, and according to Martha Jefferson Randolph, he visited but didn't have much to do, so he spent the day teaching her and some of the granddaughters penmanship. We have an example of his calligraphy, and pens, paper, and writing boards to represent the lesson. Perhaps even the standing desk was involved, which is a revolutionary relic associated with the summary view of the rights of British Americans. This was the 1774 document, likely written at Monticello, that was Jefferson's earliest public statement about rights being derived from the laws of nature and available to all people. Of course, these ideas would come again in, in the Declaration of Independence, and the standing desk is an early 1770s Virginia piece that seems to have remained at Monticello through the rest of Jefferson's life and then traveled down through generations of his descendants to come back into our collection. So we have a sense of Jefferson really looking back at the Declaration 40 years after he wrote it and thinking about what it meant and what it continues to mean for us today. And that's why these installations are so much fun because they give us these opportunities to look at these documents through the eyes of Jefferson, but also through the eyes of other people that they touched.